Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take some time today to present you with another word of encouragement. Well, just in case you were unaware, you might like to know that members of the Satanic Temple recently received permission from the state of Iowa to go into their capital and install an exhibit which includes a statue depicting the goat-headed pagan idol, Baphomet. And so it was with permission from the state that a group of Satanists went into the capital earlier this week, and they set up their Christmas display, which features a mannequin resembling the pagan idol Baphomet, complete with a ram's head covered in mirrors, and a wreath that includes a pentagram, electric candles, and then a display that features the seven fundamental tenets of the Satanic Temple. Now, it should be noted that this display was set up near the nativity scene, which was also set up there in the state capitol by uh, a conservative law firm. And listen, the, re the reason for this nativity scene, is, well, it's because this is the time of year when Christians celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And seeing how the foundational principles of our once great nation were based upon a biblical worldview, well, it only makes sense then for there to be nativity scenes in our state capitals all across the country. But what about Baphomet? What does the satanic idol Baphomet have to do with Christmas? And what does this satanic idol have to do with the formation of our more perfect union? And the answer is absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And the reason why I say this is due to the fact that Baphomet is some sort of false idol whose appearance isn't even documented up until you know recent times. Now, I get it, there are, there are some who try to make a connection between Baphomet and the Knights Templar, and yet the actual origins of this ridiculous and irreverent idol that seems to originate with a French occultist back in 1861. 1861, this is 85 years after the Declaration of Independence was signed. This was 73 years after our national constitution was ratified, thereby identifying the unalienable rights of every American. So then what does an idol of Baphomet, which was invented by an occultist in 1861, what does this have to do with Christmas? Or what does this have to do with our state's capitals? The answer is absolutely nothing. Sadly, the Republican governor there in Iowa, Kim Reynolds, well, she's taking the classic, my hands are tied, you know, the conservative position of, I don't really want to do anything that would be controversial. It was Tuesday when she responded to the Baphomet display by declaring, like many Iowans, I find the Satanic Temple's display in the Capitol absolutely objectionable. In a free society, the best response to objectionable speech is more speech. And I encourage all those of faith to join me today in praying over the Capitol and recognizing the nativ nativity scene that will be on display, the true reason for the season. Ah, okay, so according to this Republican conservative Governor Kim Reynolds, she objects to this display, and yet, you know, her hands are tied. Her hands are tied because it's a free speech issue. Apparently, it's the right of every Iowan to go in and in install a display in the state capitol, which has absolutely nothing to do with the holiday being celebrated. In order to explain my point, it should be noted here that there are no historical connections between Baphomet and the winter solstice. There are no traditional stories from European cultures that involve Baphomet delivering some form of socially acceptable Satanism to all of the bad little children of the world. No. And with that being the case, you know, are we to believe that any group can now use our state capitals as a staging ground to set up any sort of display that has nothing to do with the holiday being celebrated. If so, well, will Governor Kim Reynolds then allow Buddhists to come in and set up a, a Buddha statue during Thanksgiving? Probably not. Will she allow Harry Krishnas to set up a Krishna display in order to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day? I doubt it. Will she allow the Scientologists to come in and use the state capitol this coming Easter as the place to display, uh, you know, Xenu, the dictator of a galactic confederacy of 76 planets who was captured and imprisoned on Earth 75 million years ago. I, 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 I'm guessing no. You, you see, this is an absolutely ridiculous argument to say that, well, you know, it's free speech and so the Satanists can come in and, and use Christmas to set up their display. Now listen, I absolutely believe in free speech. And yet our state leaders should simply tell the members of the Satanic Temple that they're allowed to install their display once they're able to prove that there is a traditional holiday that is centered around their idol, Baphomet. And seeing how there is no such holiday, well then problem solved, tell them to pound sand. 
Sadly, the leaders of our Uniparty have all but given up on common sense in the name of universal inclusivity, and our government has exchanged the divine foundations of our unalienable rights for the untenable position that every belief system and every religion is equally valid and must be, you know, uh, respected. As a result, we now are watching pseudo-intellectuals who insist that they don't really worship Satan, uh, installing an idol of Baphomet in Iowa's state capital, while so-called conservative leaders sit back and watch our nation going to hell in a handbasket, because what can they do? With all this being the case, I wasn't surprised to learn that an Iowa man named Michael Cassidy did something. He decided that he was going to do something, and it was yesterday when this American veteran hero went to the Iowa State Capitol, and it was there where he proceeded to decapitate the Baphomet statue and then throw the head of that idol into a trash can. Cassidy also went on record by declaring this, and I quote him, The world may tell Christians to submissively accept the legitimization of Satan, but none of the founders would have considered government sanction of satanic altars inside Capitol buildings as protected by the First Amendment. That's right. Our founding fathers who created the U.S. Constitution on the principles of the Christian faith, they would have never allowed a group of atheists to come in and install an idol like this in any of our state capitals. Now, before you rush to insist that this act of, evand uh, this act of vandalism was some sort of crime, you know, and, and so therefore he must be punished, well, let's take a moment to consider the seven fundamental tenets of the Satanic Temple, which were on display there in the Capitol. According to tenet number two, the struggle for justice is an ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions. That's right. Veteran American hero Michael Cassidy was simply struggling for justice in the ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions. Therefore, according to the second tenet of the Satanic Temple, there should be no charges uh, against uh, this American hero. And according to the fourth tenet of the Satanic Temple, the freedoms of others should be respected, including the freedom to offend. To willfully and unjustly encroach upon the freedoms of another is to forego one's own. Okay, so according to this tenet, the fourth tenet of the Satanic Temple, veteran American hero Michael Cassidy should have the freedom to offend. He should have the freedom to offend by going in and destroying the idol of Baphomet. Therefore, all charges ought to be dropped uh, against this man, according to the fourth tenet of the Satanic Temple. According to these tenets, of the Satanic Temple, the American hero, Michael Cassidy, has done nothing wrong. And so based on the belief system of those who belong to the Satanic Temple, the members who installed the statue of Baphomet should applaud him. They should applaud him for exercising his freedom to offend as he struggles for justice in the ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions according to these Satanists. Sadly, they don't really believe their own tenets. And the proof of my point can be found in their response. You see, it was yesterday that when the Satanic Temple in Iowa posted the following statement. They say, and I quote, This morning we were informed by authorities that the Baphomet statue in our holiday display was destroyed beyond repair. We are proud to continue our holiday display for the next few days that we have been allotted. We ask that for safety, visitors travel together and use the seven tenets as a reminder for empathy in the knowledge that justice is being pursued the correct way through legal means. And then they ended this post with, Happy Holidays and Hail Satan. Well, so listen, according to the members of the Satanic, Satanic Temple there in Iowa, the, they, they are following the correct legal means to punish this man. And, and this according to their seven tenets. But wait, what happened to tenet number two, which states, and I quote again, The struggle for justice is an ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions. In other words, they have a tenet that encourages us to struggle against and prevail over our institutions which enforce the laws in pursuit of justice. That's what they want. Well, that is until they need our institutions which enforce our laws in pursuit of justice. This is the same worldview of those who call for the defunding of the police until they find themselves needing the police and then they're immediately on 911 saying, get the police over here. What's even more than that is that this worldview of the Satanic Temple has no basis for defining or expecting true justice. And the reason I say this, 
Well, it's because this worldview is unable to justify the belief in a universal morality. There is no basis for a universal morality, and therefore there's no basis for true justice. And with that being the case, the members of the Satanic Temple have no real standard for insisting that American hero Michael Cassidy did anything wrong at all. With all this in mind, I just encourage you to remember the warning that Paul presented in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. It's there where he declares, Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Much like Satan, who masquerades as an angel of light, he transforms himself into Lucifer, the light bearer. Well, listen, the servants of Satan do the same thing. They pretend to be those who are here to enlighten us, when in reality, they're here to destroy our great nation. Sadly, many have been duped by the devil as, as he leads them to help others be led astray. And with that being the case, let's pray for true Christian leaders who are ready to take a stand against this nonsense. Let's pray for Christian leaders who are not only objecting to these things, but are ready to stand against them despite the controversy. And at the same time, let's take advantage of this incredible holiday by proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And as we do, we can rejoice in knowing that our Savior Jesus will help us to fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.